Hello everyone, myself Rahu. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about Argo CD Vault plugin. I assume you all are using Argo. One of the things which I find missing in Argo if I compare other GitOps tool for Kubernetes deployment like Harness, they all have integrated secret management like Harness basically gives you its own vault to use from day zero and you can also integrate your own secret management as well if you would like to but in Argo there is no such integrations which are already inbuilt you can bring your own vault in Argo itself and that's what we are going to talk about in this tutorial I will cover what vault plugin is how it works and what are other alternatives for this your time is valuable. Without a further ado, let's deep dive in. I have a repository on GitHub, which you will find in description of this video as well. I will go through each of the files. So before we dive into our Go CD Vault plugin, let's talk about how actually it works and what are the alternatives. So right over here, I already kept this uh, in the description as well. You can see Argo and HasiCorp Vault is what we are going to talk in the Vault plugin and it also gives you like how it works and what sort of installations you have to do what we are going to talk today is about the sidecar like how the deployment is i'm basically utilizing helm for this rather than just the cube manifest for the deployment of argo i will go through the code in, in a couple of minutes here in terms of alternatives there are actually several alternatives which are pretty significant downloads as well or utilized as well as you can see over here so secret sealed is one of the open source as well you can go through this i didn't find it very well because it's kind of comes with uh, chicken and egg kind of problem you still have to manage you know secret keys and encrypted data kind of thing there is SOPS as well, which is also being used, secret operations. There is another one which I do not have in the list here, which is called external secret. I, I prefer external secret because it gives you capability of utilizing industry provider a company might be using something like Keeper or LastPass uh, as the secret management. So you can integrate your external secret manager with those tools and it can do both the things at the same time. It fetches the secrets from those external secrets all it can push the secret so in case you have a secret like uh, tls keys or the the certificate it can also push those secrets today as we are only focusing on the argo cd vault plugin will continue that and there is another alternate which is a, a vault agent and um, this is where you know all your application let's suppose you have deployed an application which requires to connect to mongodb so your application will be running a sidecar container, which will be a vault agent. It is, it is good, but you, if you have thousand of workloads running, there will be a thousand of sidecar containers will be running on that. So that's uh, one of the disadvantages as well for that. All right, so let's let's look into Argo uh, CD Vault plugin as it. It is a pretty heavy name. I will be using AVP in, in, in this video going forward. So like I said, the code uh, repository URL is in uh, the description. So what do we have here? I have a code space container uh, created over here, um, which I have opened in another tab. So let's look into all the files, what we are doing and so as part of this one, what I'm doing is I'm basically installing Argo CD into my EKS cluster. So here is, it's basically going to be deployed into Argo CD namespace, create namespace, I'm setting it to true. And it's basically grabbing the repository in the chart. I'm passing some values here, which I will also show you in a minute. I'm just setting in secure server access to true. Uh, so what is there in this file, which is argo.yaml? that's where all the the things actually comes in um so this is where you have to define if you are going to run the sidecar container along with your repo server um 
So in this repo server, as you as you can see, I'm basically creating one container as an init container, which is going to be initialized before the repo server will start. And just running with the plain uh, Red Hat container, downloading this Argo CD uh, version. These steps are actually given right over here as part of uh, um, installation. So you can see they are actually using the deployment, not the Helm right now here. But you can see right in the init container, um, they're using Alpine, but I'm deciding to use the, the rail here. And this is the link which I'm using. I'm just picking up the latest version. You can find the releases right over here. So I'm basically just using the latest at this time of the video. And then the next part, what I'm doing is running the extra container. So you will see there are three containers which I'm running. One for Kubernetes, just a plain manifest file and uh, one for customize and one for helm the reason i'm running three different is basically defined in these three files which i will go in, in a minute but most likely everything pretty much remains same as you can see it's basically just using the same image what it is it's mounting the same volume the real difference is when you basically use argo cd for your helm you are basically using command line as a helm right and if you are using customize you are basically using command line as a customize so it's basically trying to find a customization.yaml and looking what sort of annotations you have pro provided and we'll cover annotations in a, in a minute here here and if you are not having anything just a plain manifest file just using kubectl cli to deploy or any other way then you know, it's just totally different. It basically just looking for that annotations in, in that path and just trying to grab those secrets using these Argo CD command line plugin. So that's how these three plugins are different. So with the help of this, we will get our Argo CD running. So we'll have the Argo CD um, application up and running uh, with a sidecar container for um, Vault plugin. The next is, as a best practice, I always create this because I'm creating this uh, Kubernetes cluster elsewhere. So I'm just providing my Kubernetes cluster provider so that it can be used for Helm. It can also be used for Kubernetes. So right in this file, you can see I'm also deploying some Kubernetes namespaces, uh, Q Kubernetes resources as well. So this resources is basically creating that config map, which is getting mounted to the Argo CD sidecar containers to the Argo CD repo server sidecar containers. So right over here, I'm basically providing this customization.yaml, Helm, and Kubernetes all in one you know, config map, and that's basically being mounted. The next thing is it also requires you, um, make sure that Vault is running, so it also requires to authenticate to the Vault. And there are a couple of ways for the authentication, like it was defined in the backend. So one is you can use the app role, which I will suggest, but I'm actually using the vault token. So I've created a token and I'm putting vault address, vault token, vault, all of these four variables and their values in AWS secret manager. So that's where I'm getting this data from. And I'm basically creating a Kubernetes secret, putting all of these variables, values there. So basically right over here if i show you in the secret manager you can see i created this one which is vault i have my vault address vault auth type and all of those and in the token and here is my vault i have let's actually try to deploy this so i have to cd to argo cd directory and i'm basically deploying it as a part of terraform so i will do terraform in it to initialize uh, my Terraform code here. And you can actually use OpenTofu as well if you would like to. It, it will work uh, similarly with that. So Terraform is initialized. Let me do Terraform apply. I have a variable which requires a value, so I prefer to create a TFR. So I will create variables.tfrs over here, and I will put up the, the value which is needed right in that file. So, so far I have uh, initialized and deployed this. So let's connect to our cluster. So I have uh, kubectl CLI as well as k9s. So let me do kubectl get namespace. And you can see the namespace has actually got created eight minutes back. So let's give it a try. And here you can see 
that there is uh, application controller and this is what we are looking for here so the repo server this is where we actually kept um, three extra containers so one is for our Kubernetes manifest and one is for our custom tools and another one is for AVP customize. So one is for the repo server itself it's running and three extra containers for Argo CD world plugins it's running. So there are total in four, four containers running in that. And uh, we'll describe this in a second. And uh, along with that, there are services running which we can connect to. So I also have K9S and let me show you how it basically shows in K9S. So by default, it lands in default name space. I can do escape colon NS and that will give me a list of all the namespaces. So I'm interested in Argo CD right now. So that's where you can see I have Argo CD application controller, application set, and the repo server. So let's look into the repo server, why there are four containers. So down here, you can see there is one container which itself it runs, which is the copy utils and the download tools is basically our init container, what we have given. So init container is not counted on that. This is where uh, the init container was defined, which is downloading the utility, which is um, right in here. And that's basically called Argo City World plugin. And then there is M1, M2, M3, and M4. These three are the extra containers, which is Kubernetes and customize and Helm. If you do kubectl exec it, you can also SSH into that. Or what I can do is in K9, I can just press S to basically sell into that. You can do LS right over here and you can see that volume is mounted, which is CMP. And right over here, you can see config directory. That's where we were mounting it. And that's the plugin.yaml. So this is the container, which is basically ABP key k8s which we called for the normal deployment which are not handled by customized or not handled by helm so these are the plain deployments using kubectl cli or something and this is the configuration exactly what we have given right over here so similarly you can actually uh, check on all other containers if you would like so i have a url for my argo cd and if i will just use my admin credentials because i have not yet connected it with the um, sso or something like that i will use my admin credentials admin admin which is by default the username password and as you see there is no applications we do not have any place where we can see unless we create the application so that will be our next task we'll start deploying a test applications and we'll see how it works so for that i'm just going to link a repository where i have the code i have the code in the same repository as you can see under sample deployment so what i'm doing under sample deployment i have a config map where i have a database string and as i'm passing database it basically requires a username and password to connect to database in most of the cases and uh, here is my deployment where i am um, mounting the environment variables uh, from config map as well as from secret um, so i'm creating a config map for the database for the database string or for the strings which are not secret and i'm creating a secret.yaml which is the db username and the db password so let's go to vault first and let's create this path in in vault so i'm in vault i will go to secret engine and and i'm creating a kv and i'm just giving kv name as argo and underneath that i'm just creating argo rds and i'm putting username as myself and I'm putting password as myself as well and you can see the secret has been created you can look for the password and the username which I just kept same for my first name so let's try to deploy this so first as you know we have to connect our repository so I'm going to just do HTTP here I'm selecting my default project and I will grab the URL for this repository for HTTPS as we are connecting and as it is a public one it does not require any username and password so let's try to create an application I'm just going to give EVP customize app and I'm just deploying in a default I will select automatic as the policy as the sync policy and I can select my path so the, the place where I have the manifest is under sample deployment customize so I will just copy this 
and I will put it over here. As you have noticed, immediately when I uh, started putting that path, so this place was actually a directory which it got changed to plugin right now. So I will select my cluster, I will put default as a namespace, and now as this is a customized app, I will pass on ABP customize over here and I will click on create. So now my app is now created. It's basically creating three different things here. One is DB config secret and my app is healthy. So if I see the secret right over here, basically has the DB password and the DB username. However, the config which I can actually see because it's not a secret. So another thing is how will you update? So let's suppose if I get the version two, so I will come over here, I will create my version two and I'm putting something different value this time. And I will hit save right now. So my AVP will not recognize unless I do a hard refresh. So I did a hard refresh and you can see there is an icon over here which shows out of sync. And then I can hit on sync here. So now I updated DB password. So this is not changed. So you have to make sure that you also delete your um, containers in order to get this sync. So now the new container will be running. And if we will go back to our uh, K9S console, which was here, you can see there is a container running from uh, last 11 seconds. There is DB user, which is my first name and DB password should also be updated now to my last name. So this is how we can integrate Argo CD Vault plugin with Argo CD deployment. Just to summarize, we have an init container and then we have extra containers, one for each. In your case, if you are planning not to use Helm, you can definitely try not to use Helm. The another part which I would say is I'm basically using the basic image, which is Argo CD, but any other image which will have the CLI installed of Argo CD Vault plugin will also work. It does not need a lot of capabilities as well. So as a quick summary, in this video, we have gone through why we need a vault and the reason we need a vault is actually we do not want to keep our secrets in Git repository. The secret should not touch Git because of the vulnerabilities, because of the security risks and many other risks. So with that, we got our Argo CD plugin deployed along with Argo CD in our, in our Kubernetes cluster. And we have tested one of the deployment using customization, how it works and uh, Give it a try yourself and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Happy New Year to all of you. We'll see you later. Thank you.